Family, man, it's your boy, Pastor Live, and my beautiful, beautiful wife, Pastor Lisa. And man, we want to welcome you into another episode of Studio 415. So listen, man, this is just a platform where we get the opportunity to tell you and to really share with you our faith, man, our faith concerning things that we deal with in culture all the time, to build the church, to build the body of believers. But here it is, to give insight to those who may not be Christian, who may not follow Christ, who may not be a part of the church. And we have vowed to do one thing, one thing and one thing only. That's it. And it is this, to speak the truth in love. Hold on, wait. Oh, yeah, I love that sound. There it is. And with that being said, we just want to encourage you to stay logged in, to stay tapped in, because what we um, have on our hearts today, we believe that it will strengthen those who want it the most. Absolutely. And hey, if this is your first time, would you do us a favor? Go ahead and subscribe. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, like this video. Share this video. If it has really been blessing you, go ahead and tell people about it. And not only that, but go and follow our IG page at Studio 415 Podcast. Because what we're going to be doing probably uh, this week, right after this episode, we're going to be putting up a post. And we want to know what are some topics that we can talk about. Absolutely. Right? What are some things that um, are hitting your ears that are hitting, you know, where you live, your place of work, your school, whatever it is, because we want to stay relevant. Um, sometimes the church gets stuck, right? And we don't speak to those relevant issues and we don't speak to the things that are really, really, um, you know, messing people up. You know, we talked about the sage and the crystals. We've talked about yeah. social media. We talked about sneaky links. So all of these things are relevant to what's going on right now. Yeah. So we really want some of your ideas and your input as well. And then also, so with that being said, what I feel like is most important mm -hmm. um, today is to deal with things that um, we are facing on a cataclysmic level, mm. a large level. Yeah. Um, and it's this idea, originally we were talking about having a segment on online church. Mm -hmm. And then that shifted to, in a sense, online life, life. or life online. You know, because Natural I believe reality. that where we are right now, it's scary yeah. because everything is online, which has deteriorated mm -hmm. in a sense, interpersonal communications yeah. and interpersonal uh, interactions. Mm -hmm. And now being around people is weirder yeah. than chatting with strangers online. It's crazy. And it's funny because you see too, right? Um, they talk about the COVID babies. You see these COVID babies? I know a few of them, too. If you're watching, you know who you are. You got a COVID baby. But they, um, you know, they it, being around crowds and people, like, make them nervous, make yeah. them cry. And it's getting younger and younger, right? And so that just goes to show how much we are not really engaging as much as we used to because yeah. so much stuff is shifting to online. I have, like, a lot of little cousins and siblings, and they do this weird Snapchat thing, right? They're really, like, talking to people, but they just, like, take a picture of themselves. And y'all probably know what I'm talking about. They literally, like, take a selfie, like, doing nothing. They're like this. Inside their nose, and then they write a message versus like mm. calling on the phone or doing FaceTime or anything like that. It's legitimately, let me take a quick, stupid, silly picture and then write to you um, because that's just how things have shifted. Yeah. That's how things have shifted. And it was so subtle. It was so subtle. And a lot of it, I believe, obviously, you know, started with pandemic. Um, mm -hmm. But there were, there were some, there were some hints and there were some facts and clues that were showing us like where we were leading into. Yeah. And then, I mean, as pastors, we often get questions like, you know, is it okay to be a member of a church online? Mm -hmm. um, as pastors, we get asked questions like, uh, is it okay to date online? Mm -hmm. um, everything, Amazon, I feel like, has taken over the entire world. Listen, um, you took can, over my paycheck. Come, yeah. You, you. <laughs> well, she tried to set me up, guys. <laughs> she tried to set took me over up. our paycheck. Yeah. Yes, yeah, she Household, tried to set me up. Yeah. You know what I mean? I didn't go there. Thank then you. You knew you where was, I could have gone. You're going to say my paycheck? Uh, say so what, what has saying? happened is Amazon has taken over a lot. Um, and it's mm -hmm. funny because, um, in my opinion, this online piece has really weighed heavily on the social interaction of people. Yes. Um, which is putting our community 
um, in a very, very tight mm. position. Mm -hmm. But before we get there, let's talk about the church piece, sweetie. Okay. What are you thinking? So when I think about it, right, there are, I said, I, we don't want to beat the idea up. We don't want to say it's terrible. We don't Absolutely. want to say it's a bad yeah. idea because there's so many great things that have come from online church, right? So I, I said, let me write like a list of pros, right? A list mm -hmm. of pros and some things um, because what was happening was we were getting questions. I was getting questions like, Pastor, is it okay mm -hmm. for me to be a virtual member? Um, mm -hmm. Is it okay for me to just come sometimes? Yeah. You know, like, does that work? Does that read? Like, is that is that okay? Is that okay for me to get that? Um, and then it's like, can I just go when I feel like it? Mm -hmm. You know, what's wrong with having church at home? Some people have moved. You know, I moved and my pastor is hundreds of miles away. Mm -hmm. So what do I do now? And I said, well, there are some pros, you know, to online church. One, like I said, going back, when we think about the pandemic and how our home church shut down. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So we belong to a mega church and our home church shut down. And because of this whole virtual space and place, we were still mm -hmm. able to connect. We were still able to get our word. Absolutely. They recorded worship. I mean, yeah. we were still able to have that fundamental piece. Yeah. So not only that, but churches were exposed to so much of this yeah. virtual world, right? It was amazing. Churches that had never been online, that had never been, maybe their best thing was Facebook Live, right? Yeah, it was And amazing. so people were on YouTube and these different platforms. And so with that idea, the next portion, the next pro that I saw was this whole idea of evangelism. Yes. And how yes. we were able to cast millions of people, got millions saved. Of people, millions got, of people saved got saved during the pandemic. During the pandemic with online ministry. That's what I'm saying. So people were able to watch and people were able to connect because we did not have the option to go outside of our home. Yeah. And not only that, but people who probably wouldn't have never walked into a church space, into a church building, were able to find community were able to find a pastor that they could listen to during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing that I want to highlight, though, when it came to the church that was online for the pandemic, I want to be very clear, at least from my position in the church I served, not only served, but I worked at. Yeah. Um, the idea of online services and online church was set up with the idea of this is a convenience. Yes. This is a convenience. Yes. Um, this is a, you know, a, an intermediary of like, like this is like a meeting in the middle. Yes. Like I, I, I'm not doing this, but it's weird because the in, the convenience has turned to like the constant. Yes. Yes. And I think that that is where we get the issue that the convenience of online church, it was set up for, you know, people who were sick and people who uh, had caretakers and people who yes. just couldn't make it out. I mean, and if you just work, you know, third shift and you were just dragging and you yes. were tired and there was no way that you can make it out the house, then it was great because your church gave you the convenience yes. of online church. But now the convenience has turned to, I just didn't feel like showing up. That's it. The convenience is now turning to, I would rather not interact with people. I would just rather, and you hear this stuff, I would just rather get my word. Yep. I would just rather get my word and go. Yep. I, I, so it, it's in a sense, it's turned to church being this very selfish place. Yes, yes. Where online, I watch, I get what I need to get for me, and then I leave, not understanding that when you go to church and when you are shoulder to shoulder with people, you get to speak with people, you get to feel the burdens yes. of, you know, your neighbor, you get to pray with them, you get to interact with them, you get to join in community with them, you yes. get to join in communion with them, you yes. get to celebrate their baptisms, you get to, you know, you get to do all of these things when you are actually in person with each other. And I believe we've taken now the convenience yeah. of social media and the convenience of online church and made it the constant in our life. And I think that that is where the issue plays yeah. part. You said something so good. You said, um, What'd I, I say? get what... I mean, you say a lot of good things. Oh, okay. You know, you say a really good Okay, I'm saying be specific, though. You said I said something good. Say it, say, say it again. Well, I, didn't get, I didn't get there yet. All right, I'm waiting. But let me talk. Okay, go, go, go. You know what? I'm not going to tell you that you say some good things. I'm no, no, no. Say, I really want you to. Come on, plan, let me know. I'm going to say this. Encourage right me. I want to play off of what you said. I want to piggyback off of that. No, don't say that. Don't yeah. say that. <laughs> say you said some really good things. I'm going to piggyback off of some really good things that you said. Yeah, yeah. I like um, that. You talked about church. You talked about people saying, you know, I get my word. 
and I get what I need, and it works for me. Yeah. But really, I said that. Clap for me. Clap love for him, it. y'all. Thank put you some so much. Put some claps in the chat. Uh, uh, love language number one: words of affirmation. Is uh, you cannot know. So when you see him, please affirm and, and just tell him that he is awesome. Amen. But um, it's so funny when you say that because the church was also desi- was designed for us to serve. Mm. It wasn't so much First Peter talks about it and us using our so gifts good. and coming together with one another because we have different giftings, right? Mm-hmm. And so when we make the comments, I get what I need, well, what about the person who needs your gifting that's not getting what they need mm. because you're not there? Come on. You know, they, he said some I've given the ability to teach and some to speak in tongues and some to interpret and some to evangelize, all of those things. So what about when your specific gift is missing in the church? Man. Somebody is not getting what they need. So I'm glad that you're getting your word. I'm glad that you're comfortable in your SpongeBob pajamas sitting on your Tempur-Pedic. That's Man, amazing. That's so good. That's amazing. But what about the believer? And what about the other person? What about your, forget that, your brother or sister in Christ who needs what you need? And so I oh, think that goodness. we have forgotten that detail when we really take online church and say, hey, this is my only day off. I'm about to rest. I'm about to chill. And like you said, it becomes a constant. Yeah. You just said something that was amazing. Oh, oh, what is so I'm what was that? You a clap. What was that? Ha. I said something that was what? No, you, you said that the church is not just a space where you come and get, but it's a place that you come and serve. Yes. And so what I want to piggyback on that and say is we are all full. Pay attention to my language. Okay. We are all full of gifts. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We are all full of gifts. Some to preach and to prophesy. Some to evangelize. Man, some to be a part of healing and miracles. Some yeah. to be able to 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 listen to the woes of somebody's life and to pour back into. Mm-hmm. But we're all full of something. Yes. And and what is. Just so ironic for me is that individuals can stay home. Many people stay home, away from the church, and you listen to your word. Mm -hmm. You listen to what you need to get. But it seems as if those same individuals who forsake Mm -hmm. right, the Mm -hmm. assembly of the believers, right, those individuals who forsake church and say, I'm not going anymore, they tend to have issues. Mm. Talk about it. So now... Help me make the correlation where if online church is giving you exactly what you need, Mm -hmm. then why is it that you are still dealing with many of the issues, even on a greater scale than you were dealing with them previous to not coming to church? Here it is. This is this is this is this is just me talking right now. Mm -hmm. I believe that we're all full of something. Okay. so imagine this cup. I believe that this cup can represent who we are. And this cup right now is full of water. In order for me to properly receive anything else in this cup, I would have to pour out. Yes, yep. So here it is. I believe that many of the issues that we are coming up against with those who just don't want to come to church, yeah. we're so full with the gifts and the stuff that God has given us. Mm. And the reason why they're constantly going through the same issues on a consistent basis yeah. is that they have no place to empty out mm. so that they can get poured back into. And that is where we are. We're so full at home. That's all you do is get full. You listen to Bishop Jakes. You listen to Pastor Lav. You listen to Pastor Tanks. You listen to Dr. Vernon. You listen to Pastor Creflo Dollar. And you're just getting full, 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 full. But you're not pouring out. So you really can't receive what we're pouring into you because you're already full to the brim. At some point in time, you go to church to empty out, to empty out your emotions to empty out the depression, to empty out, to empty out with your gifts, to empty out, to empty out on your community so that when the pastor actually speaks, he's actually feeling your spirit, your yeah. spirit. Yeah. So it's, it's, that's, I believe that that's a part of the issue is that the church is not just a place where you sit and get, yeah. but it's a place where you pour and we're not pouring because we're at home in our sponge job, in our SpongeBob pajamas. On the Tempur-Pedic. 
on the temper beat it. I hope it's a temper. That's a lot of money. I'm just saying, like, if you're going to be at Bedside Baptist, at least it's always a temper beat it. But all that to say, that's so good because, two, um, we're not, not only are we not pouring in our church, but we're not pouring in our community. Yeah. So even when we talk about life online, right, this virtual reality that we live in, we're not um, out there. We're not interacting with other people. So when we think about things like online shopping, so good. right, these malls are going down. Like pretty mm. soon every mall is going, there's not going to be a need for a mall. Ever. Because ever because everything has shifted and switched to online. Yeah. So now where do I also go out into the community? Yeah. I, I don't know how many times I've run into people. I've I prayed with people at gas stations. I've complimented mm. people um, when I go do certain things or when I'm at the mall or when I'm at the grocery store. Because now, you know, thank God, I thank God for Instacart and DoorDash because it's given so many people jobs, right? I've been able mm -hmm. to benefit from that at one point in my life. So I'm grateful for that. But when we take out all the interactions, yeah. the only place that we're – because cause, cause, cause if it's just church, like the devil go to church. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's just like, yeah, like where am I? Go where else am I going? Mm -hmm. How can I go outside of the church to interact with people? If I don't have a need to go to the store, if I don't have a need to go grocery shopping, if I don't have a need to do anything else, if I stay in the confines of my home, how then am I also reaching the least, the lost, and the left out? Mm. That's so good. So it's not just, like you said, yeah, we were talking about online church, right? But what about all of the other things? We were built for community. Yes. God created us for community. Yes. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12 talks about how we are a body, yes. right? And if one part of the body suffers, we all suffer. If one part of the body, you know, grows, we all grow. Yeah. So we were, we were literally built to work and function together. Yes. When you think about prisons... Right. Think about prisons. The highest order or the 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 top the like top tier, uh, what do you call that? Like punishment is putting somebody in the hole, taking them away. Uh, yeah, taking, taking them, them away, away from socialization, yeah. taking them away from community because we were not meant to live separate. We were not meant to so self good. isolate. So in a sense, what online life is doing is putting us in a in, in the hole. <laughs> Like we're living life in the hole because we're refusing to go out. And sometimes we don't even see it happening. I, I Like I said, I have online shop mm. and online order my food. And I've That's done so, so many good. things online. But like I said, when it becomes your norm, you don't realize how it's affecting you. Yeah. Yeah. You said we are made for community. Yes. We are made to connect. Yes. We are made to interact. And what online church and online shopping and online, you know, getting your grocery, everything is pushing you away yeah. from interaction. Yeah. To the point, as I said before, to where interacting with a person is almost weird now. You know, being able to pastor a multi-generational church and we get the chance to talk to you know hundreds of people throughout the weekend um, who get the chance to flood into the doors of our church. And one of the probably oddest things that I get the chance to hear is when people say like, oh, this boy tried to talk to me, but I didn't know what to say, so I just... Or if a guy says, man, you know what, man, I like that girl, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hop yeah. in her DMs. But she's literally like 10 feet in front of him. Yeah. So pastor, man, you know, I like her. So when I get home, I'm going to uh, send her a DM. Yeah. It's like, no, brother, like she's she's right in front of you. Yeah. Oh, man, you know, that's kind of weird, you know, just to walk up on her. No, it's kind of weird to, to search her name in a search engine, go through 99 of her pictures, and then phantomly like them, and then shoot her a direct message, and she has no clue who you are, and you're going to say, hey, at 11.58, I saw you at the cafe at the church mm -hmm. buying a muffin, and so I wanted to tell you, you look cute. That's weird. That's the weird part. So what you're telling me is now that not men, you going up and asking for her number. So you're saying that the young men don't have no game. Man, listen. I mean, that's the facts. I mean, let's be clear. You know what I mean? Yeah. I shot can my you, shot. I was like, can you like? Let's be very clear. Let me tell y'all what I did. Let what me tell y'all what I did. What would you say to a young man who's trying to approach? Like, what, 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 
Let's practice. Let's role play. Go get her. Let's role play. Man, listen, man. I'm, at, I, the, I'm at the cafe. You wasn't that. Okay. Hey, girl. Hey. You, hey, girl. Oh, hey. How you doing? My name is my name is Pastor Laugh. Oh, hi, Pastor Lisa. No, I'm Pastor Laugh. I said, hello, I'm Pastor Lisa. I'm the pastor in this place. Oh, okay. I'm a pastor as well. How are you? It's time to get naked <laughs> and have babies. <laughs> now, you see how that worked? No. Oh, let, let, think about it. I have... Two kids now. I have a church. I'm successful. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because I just shot my shot. Not, you know what I'm saying? Now it's all over. It's a shot, all right. You know what I mean? Now, you don't have to make that aggressive approach, but at least. Please go don't up. make that aggressive approach. Please don't go up to anybody and say, let's get naked. <laughs> okay. So, what I've just done, though, is I got her attention. You know what I mean? Now she's thinking about me. Naked, Naked, but that's not that's what? not the whole goal. Okay, <laughs> let me go back to what I, my whole point. You threw me off. I didn't, I wasn't playing. I wasn't planning to like role play that thing out. You <laughs> threw me off. Okay, hey. point that I'm making, guys and and women and, and and whoever's watching. If it's ever to a point where talking to people is weird, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that we have something else that we have to look at. That's good. When I was younger, and this is not to to promote toxicity. Mm -hmm. But when I was younger, my cousins, they taught me how to interact yeah. with someone that I like. When you see her, say hello. Yes. Tell her your name. Tell her where you're from. Tell her your family. Tell her your thoughts. And so now we're doing all of this through social media. We're doing through all of this through online interaction. Yeah. And so this sanitized version of a person that you meet online, which we've already talked, go and check that podcast out because no one's going to post their worst. Yeah. That's so good. We are always going to post our best. That's so good. So you just caught someone at their best for 1,700 posts. Mm. So they put 1,700 pictures up there, and they're all pictures of their best with filters, yes. with, with voice modulation, with yeah. all of this stuff that we can do online. Now, you just caught them at their best. I want to catch you for coffee when you just had a long day at work, and you still have to be functional as a human being. Like, that's the person that I have to talk to because you get the opportunity to experience life when you are interacting with a person. An online church and online shopping and all this online stuff, you don't get that. I know a person who came up to me this past weekend and said, I saw this church online. I started listening to this church online. It was great. And so because online, just like social media, yeah. Churches like our church, we try to present our best self for online. Absolutely. So our lights and our sound, yeah. and they don't get to see the ushers. They don't get to see the deacons. They don't get to see the ministers. They don't get yeah. to see the classes, right? Only thing we're showing them are the things that we want them to see yeah. online. Yeah. She said, this church was perfect. I walked through the doors, and I felt like what I saw online did not match what I saw in person. And I believe that that's the same thing that's happening. Yes, this is not just online church. This is online life. You are meeting guys on Tinder and Christian Mingle, and these people, yeah. they seem great online. The pictures, the sound, the look, everything is cool, but when you interact with them in person, That's it. you're like, whoa, wait a minute. But here it is. People may say, that's why you should do that thing online first, and that's why. Well, I believe that because of online ministry mm -hmm. and because of online churches, mm -hmm. we've now put too much of a burden for people to act perfect. Mm -hmm. I am not the, listen, the Remedy Church, here, let me make an announcement. The Remedy Church is not the church that you see online. The Remedy Church is the church that you are going to experience in person. That's good. And so what I mean by that is the word is going to be without reproof. The word is going to be able to bless you. Mm -hmm. But the Remedy Church is filled with people who have issues. 
So when you come in here, you are going to be able to interact with people who have issues just like you. And we're all trying to work this thing out in a community, which means that community is not going to be perfect. It is not going to be sanitized. It is not going to be sterilized. It is not going to be this 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 clean thing. Yeah. Sometimes ministry gets ugly. Sometimes church get messy. But that is life. That is real, in-person life. And online has taken away from that. No, that's real. No, that's so, that's so good. Because when you think about the ability to interact, right? When you think about the chances to interact and you think about um, just how that plays a role, like you said, in who we are Mm -hmm. and our daily life and what we show our children and, Mm -hmm. you know, all of that. You get tired presenting. Yeah. You get tired of presenting sometimes. I know it's, it's too much work. It's too much work to put this on and put that on and just take a picture. It's so much work. It's so Mm -hmm. much work sometimes. And I feel like, um, I don't know. I just feel like, how do we come out of that? Mm -hmm. How do we begin to crawl out of that, right? How do we say, okay, like, I've been in this point. I've been at this place. Um, It's comfortable for for me. It works for me. Um, My life is just like I like it. I get my groceries ordered at this time, and I get this sent to me at this time. And even if I want to do a curbside pickup, I don't have to deal with all these people. Like, it's just been working for me. Plus, COVID is still a real thing for me. So how then do I come out of that? How then do I say, okay, well, how do I jump back into society? Is it safe? Is it realistic? Because now so many jobs have also gone online. I know somebody, a remote, right? So Mm -hmm. I know a person now where it's like, I'm not going back to a cubicle from nine to five. Mm -hmm. And it's not because they don't want to work, but it's like, I have been able to get so much stuff done here and at home and I have the flexibility and all of those things. Like, I don't want to go back into a nine to five job. I want to stay home. Right. Um, And that's fine if you have other outlets. But if your job was your outlet and Mm -hmm. now it's remote, if your church was your outlet, but now you've cut your grass on Sundays. Yeah. And it. so how then do I begin to get back out there and engage in life. And let me say this too. I told our prayer team that we have to begin to pray and intercede for those who are on that line. Yes. Because, you know, my husband and I, at the end of service, we stand out in the hallway, we hug every individual, whoever wants to talk, whoever wants to hug, we'll about be out there for an hour and a half if we have to, right? Mm-hmm. And this following Sunday, after everything was finished, I felt so heavy. Yeah. I felt heavy and I felt, I, I literally feel like I couldn't stand. I had to go to our prayer room right after mm-hmm. and just pray because people have gone three years in isolation. Three years. And now they're starting to see I'm in a place where I don't want to be. My issues have gotten a hold of me. My family has gotten a hold of me. The enemy is telling me these lies and I don't know what to do. I, I, I'm stuck. And I told our team, I said, we have to begin to pray and intercede for those individuals who are on the cusp, who want to come back, but they don't want to give up their comfortability, who want to come back, but they don't want to start over, who want to come back, but they're saying, like, I have to give up so much. Like, we have to be praying for them. Yes. Because people want to interact. Yeah. People want, it's, it's, it's in us. Like I said, we were built and designed for community. Yeah. When we look at, I think it's Acts 2, I think it's Acts 2, and they talk about hmm. coming together and how they used to break bread and they used to eat together and they used to, you know, uh, talk about each other's um, issues. They used to pray and heal each other. They used to do so much stuff together. And it's funny because also in the Bible, when Paul would write these letters, they would often talk about how it grieved them to be apart. To be apart. Yes. Like you meant, I can't wait till we get back together. Face to face. I can't wait things. till we see each other face yes. to face. I can't wait till we get together again. Yes. Like, yeah, this is cool for right now. Yes. Like, I'm giving you this for right now. I'm giving you this to help you right now. But listen, it's going to go to another level once we get together. Yes. And you said something that was great. And it was this idea of when you are alone, it's just you and your problems. That's it. That's it. It's just you and your problem. And I don't want to always stare my issue in the face. All day. 
Like, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. I want to go to a place and a space with people who will encourage me to overcome that issue. A lot of people are at home and, you know, not going out, but they're looking at someone in the mirror that they're not satisfied with. So you're not going out speaking to people who can speak into your life. And so you stay at home looking at the same person that you're dissatisfied with. And that's ourselves. I don't like the way I think. I don't like my position. I don't like my weight. I don't like my size. I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. And that's what you see in the mirror. But the crazy thing about it is that when you interact with people, they're going to tell you what they see. And what they see doesn't compare to what you see. You think that you're just this worst person in the world, and they're going to start telling you, like, no, you're actually, like, really good. I think we all have issues in that area, but let's try to figure out how to get out of it together. And that's why we have to get back to a place. And earlier you talked about online shopping, how online shopping has shut down malls. What if I su- just suggested? I mean, and I, you can't you can't put this on record. I ain't seen it. It's already but on record. in the same way, we're saying that online, online shopping shut down stores and malls. What if I told you, man, that we may get to a season where online church will shut down churches? Mm. That online ministry will shut the doors of the mm. brick and mortar church. Because if so many people stay then what is the sense of a building? Jesus. And what is a community without a spiritual house? Come on. Come on. Like what is a community without a place where you can go and get your spirit fed? Like what is a community without that? Yeah. What is that? You know what I mean? Like it's like, come on, man. And there's something to be said for those who believe that, right? And it's true. Like the church is a body of believers, right? So the church is not technically a building. But there's something to be said about creating a space for him. Absolutely. I don't know how many books I've read on prayer or on, you know, whatever it is, uh, on learning, um, discerning the voice of God and books on prayer and books Uh on spiritual growth um, where it talks about preparing a place for him. Like, this is where I meet God. Yeah. Whether it's in your home, um, in your closet, and, you know, downstairs, I, I read a book, and somebody's space was just a rocking chair, right? A rocking chair that overlooked their um, backyard. They had all this yard. That was a space for them. But we literally here have created a space for Christ. Yeah. A space for people to come to, for people to let their hair down, for people to fall on the altar, for people yeah. to worship. How many of you are truly, truly giving yourself praise and worship time when you just tune in for a word? Hey, hey listen, listen, let's not play. Uh, we still trying to tweak our sound. Uh, let me t- unless unless Don't unless listen. you are uh, heel song and elevation. You're not watching uh, nobody. Listen, worship. The worship right now. All of us now. Yeah, come, on, come on, all my now. pastor friends. Don't try to play me. All of us, we all trying to figure out how to critique the sound, That's right? That's it. That's it. So to even think that somebody's at home talking about hallelujah off the worship. And if now, you are, that's great. Because I probably would too because I like to on. worship. That's just who I, part of who I am, how, who we all are. But in a sense, like I said, so where is that time to worship? Where is that space that we've created, right? Coming to church on Sunday gives us some type of consistency yeah. in our spiritual walk. We're consistently listening to word, to our word. We're consistently getting moment and time to pray. We're consistently, even if it's just a hug. I have mem- We have members here who just come in and they come they out. But guess what? Even in their in and out, they're going to get at least two or three hugs in and out. Hug. And sometimes it's that one hug. It's that one smile. It's that one wave. It's that one, God bless you, sis. God bless you, brother. Like It's that one thing that people need. And we've had people who legitimately have come to church and said, I just came for a hug. Like That's hug. how I needed to be ministered to today. Yeah. Like I needed someone to say hello to me yeah. because I've been at home all by myself and I haven't had any interaction. Going back to that, where do you set aside in a place? Think about Daniel. Mm. Like Daniel would go to the same place mm-hmm. and he would pray every day to the point where they're like, I know that I can try to get him caught up because he is consistent in the place in which he goes to interact with God. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And even though they tried to get him caught up, they could not get him caught up yeah. because the God that we serve says, man, if you're doing something consistently for me, yeah. then I'm going to bless you on the other end. That's 
Absolutely. And when they tried to kill him, it turned into a miracle later on. Yeah. Like, but he 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 started with going to the place. Yeah. Daniel, why you ain't switch it up? Because the place means something. Yeah. Daniel, why didn't you just uh, uh, stay in, in, in another place? Why didn't you go? Because the place means some. I meet God there. Yeah. So. No, that's good. And, and like I said, we can all put up places in our homes. We can all do that individually, absolutely. But as my husband and I were talking about, there's something to be said about coming into a space and place with a body of believers, with communing together and walking together and worshiping together and speaking together, sharing, laughing, crying, praying, all of that together. together. And we were listening to this church training and it said, gone are the, are the days where good preaching is enough mm. to keep people coming back to your church because people are looking for that community. You know, here at the church, we have a cafe set up, right? And so mm -hmm. we sell a couple of things out of there. But that's one of my favorite parts because I just see people sitting around, talking, eating popcorn, muffins, you know, drinking whatever. And they're just sitting around talking and fellowshipping. Mm -hmm. That idea of koinonia, right? Mm -hmm. Like fellowshipping with one another, yeah. talking, laughing, all of that. That is what continues to I believe, you know, make churches stand out. Yeah. Small groups or life groups or things throughout the week, all of that type of stuff, that matters. And so we're not here to beat up on online life. No. Because we have benefited, still, it, still benefit from online life, online mm -hmm. dating, right? Hey, there's nothing. Sometimes yep. you're busy. Sometimes you just yep. don't get out. Sometimes online dating may work for you, yep. right? But all we're saying is don't let online be your only source. Mm -hmm. Don't let that be the main thing that you flock to to get the interaction that you need. Mm -hmm. Don't make the convenience the constant. That's it. Do not make the convenience the constant. Yeah. And, and for those of you who are watching and you may be asking, well, Pastor, what do I do? Mm -hmm. Like, where, what? I haven't found a church. Yeah. Or I moved or, you know, I, hey, that's fine. Or my work schedule doesn't allow me on Sundays right now. Mm -hmm. Those are not, that's not, that's not the, the rule, right? That's the exception. Yeah, it's the exception. It's the exception. And if you are looking to get into a church home, then yes, I would say, hey, watch a couple people, maybe stick to one voice this season mm -hmm. and say, hey, I'm going to watch this and see how this goes. And then maybe go visit. We've had so many people come through the doors yeah. here who have said, hey, I watched you I for watched a month and then I came to see you. Praise yeah. God. They stayed because I think it matched what they saw. But uh, what were we going to say? I got, I got another bit of advice, though. Yes, sir. The same way that we're okay with switching apps when they don't work. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you got one dating app. I don't, I ain't nobody cute on this app. <laughs> and then you go to another app. And then you go to that dating app and you say, oh my God, it's the same. Okay, let me go to another dating app. Because all the same people and are then on it goes to the No, the point that I'm making is this. I think we, we put too much pressure on in-person stuff. Like if you want to get out there and you want to try, then go to a place. Yeah. And you may say, you know what, this church isn't for me. And you mm -hmm. go to the next church. Mm -hmm. You know what, this church isn't for me. Let me go to the next church. This church isn't, okay, I work on Sundays. You know how many places have church on Saturdays? Mm -hmm. Let me, let me just try service. this. Or they have evening churches, mm -hmm. you know, evening services later on. Like, let, let me just try this. Like, you know what I mean? It's, there's something out there for you. Yeah. The convenience of online shouldn't become the constant of life. I'm going to keep on saying it. Yeah. Because that convenience is going to eventually eradicate every in-person interaction that I believe we, we, we have. Yeah. Like, it's scary to say that there aren't any more malls. Yeah. That are, like, the mall by our house that sucks. <laughs> All the malls really suck. They, they I mean, suck. if you know a good mall, can you just type it there? If you live they in the northeastern suck. Ohio area, can you just type in a good mall? I, I they mean, suck. Good mall. Anybody? Randall is good, gone. Just Randall? 
Yeah, remember Randall? Randall been gone. I Randall know. is Amazon. Randall is anything Listen, but a mall at this um, point. You know what I'm so, saying? Summit sucks. Belden Village sucks. Hey, 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 hey. We said we were going to name drop. All I'm just oh. saying is we're going to cut that out. Just cut that out. Don't cut that out. All I'm saying is it's just hard to find those things, right? Yeah. And then ultimately, pray about Chapel it. Chapel Hill is gone. <laughs> Chapel Hill right next door. They got uh, construction companies Golly. and all types of stuff. Severance. I ain't going to Severance. That's um, Westgate, you know, Midway Mall for Midway. those of you in Lyria, Lorraine. Oh, man. They're all down. They're Just down. down man. They're down. But all that to say as well, and pray about it. Yeah. Pray about where God is leading you in this season, right? He might be leading you to a, a place. It might be a 45 minute drive. It might be around the corner. It may yeah. not be a church that. You thought, hey, I would actually join this church, but pray about it. Because like Pastor Lav said, there is a space and place for you. Yeah. doesn't have to be a mega church. Yes. Don't have to be whatever. If you're certain denominate, whatever the case may be, pray about it. Yeah. And let, let the Holy Spirit lead you in that area. Because like we said, we were built for community. We were made to fellowship with one another. Um, and I truly believe that that's what Christ wants for our lives. And even with that being said, we're built for community. Yeah. And... One thing that I feel the unction to tell every person who's watching right now is God's kingdom is probably the greatest, not probably, it is the greatest community that you can ever be a part of. Absolutely. So if you're watching right now and you're saying, man, I'm not a part of a church and I am watching online, but I'm trying to get my spirit right. And I'm, yeah. Pastor Life, I'm trying to do what you said, just kind of shop around and see where I want to visit and where I want to go. And I'm trying to figure it all out. But right now I am isolated. Right now I am alone. And right now I need some help. Well, be a part of this community. Yeah. And that's the community in the kingdom of God. Man, there's a number online right now. And I just want to offer it to you as a space where you can text if you need prayer. Amen. Or, hey, if you didn't receive Jesus or you have never received Jesus to be your Lord and your Savior, then there are some people who are on the other side of that who will be willing to pray with you and to yes. tell you about the goodness of God and all the things that he's already done for you and all the things that he wants to continue to do for you in the future once you are a part of his family. Trust and believe that God loves you so much and he wants to continue, continue, continue to see your life improve once you start engaging in the kingdom. Yeah. And listen, thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you like what you're seeing, if you think it's awesome and you want to support the vision, listen, it takes money to do what we do. So you're going to see some information right there on how you can give, how you can give so we can continue to push the message of God forward, continue to do more segments, more podcasts, uh, bring people on, all of that yeah. thing. Um, and some of you have been giving, so we thank you so much for your Absolutely giving. Thank um, we thank you because it's because of that that we can continue to do what we're doing. So. Yeah, not only that, um, like I said in the beginning, if you haven't already, yep. go ahead and subscribe. I know you've seen it pop up a few times, but we want to make sure that you guys are tuning in. So go ahead and subscribe. Don't forget you can follow us. You can follow us on IG um, Absolutely. at Studio, uh, Studio 415 Podcast, right? Yep. Studio 415 Podcast on IG, like, share, subscribe, all of that. Post it to your story. Mm -hmm. Like if you really, if this resonated with you and you think it would help somebody else, share it with them. Absolutely. And let them know, um, you know, just what we've been talking about here. Well, for those who are watching, we appreciate you for logging on. Yes. Man, for those who are unfamiliar with who we are, man, continue to go through the history of Studio 415 and the things that we've had the opportunity to talk about. But man, I'm glad that you had the opportunity to be with us today. And until next time, we just want to let you know that we love you. But God, he loves you so much more. Peace.